did the EPA address why the difference in the level of the water and water tanks or the water, you know, the so-called drinking water um, and the difference in the lead levels? I mean, water is water. It runs through the same distribution system. So I don't know where there's a difference. Like it, maybe I'm missing something where there's a difference in drinking water and the water that goes into my house into the water heater that I bathe in and sometimes drink when I'm in the shower and things like that. But I'm, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, what, is there a difference in that water? I mean, is there some <coughs> magical separation at some point? Or? And I think that's where it's going to be very helpful when we get, you know, an engineer from CMNT that's got real expertise because I don't. I can tell you what I've heard uh, anecdotally, which is that, um, you know, if, if water is standing and sitting for a long time in, in like a metal area or, you know, something that's corrosive or something like that, then, you know, it could potentially change its makeup or take up some of those properties. So whether or not that's the whole story, I don't know. I think that's what we're going to have to have our engineer take a look at. Um, but, the, but the testing of, of the actual drinking water is, is kind of a different test and different. I mean, I'm not sure I go into too much detail because I know a lot is preliminary and stuff, but I did one thing I did read when I read their statement is they said the EPA said there was numerous misstatements that were put out there. What were they talking about when they said misstatements? Um, I think uh, one of them was comparing uh, our situation to the situation in Athens. Um, they felt that those that, that the two situations are not necessarily um, uh, comparable. Uh, and uh, the other, I think, may be relating to the idea that there's somehow lead in the drinking water. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I just want, you know, and, and the reason you know, this is important too is that, you know, from a, our standpoint, is, you know, I'd like to have at least have them on record for this stuff because, as we do know, in Flint, Michigan, the EPA that was going through the EPA, things like that, and there was a lot of misstatements, I think, given by the IEPA at the time as to what the situation was in Flint, Michigan. That way, at least there's some track history here if this does spiral out of control, um, or as it continues to spiral out of control, that way uh, we have the IEPA pinned down um, in case, you know, the village has to go back against South Sangamon Water Commission and the Illinois Protection or Environmental Protection Agency with this. and. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, on any threat, I take those people that they're professionals and what they do, but, you know, I would like for them to continue to be on the record with well, this I stuff. Well, I think they are planning on, I mean, contact a couple people from the Senate, and they've contacted actual who's in charge of the IPA under Governor Rauner, and they're supposed to be putting a statement together, is what I understand, which will it do exactly that. Um, so I think there's a lot more information to come they just out. They don't have it yet. You know, admit, you know, whether you use the word misstatements or misunderstandings, from the time of the last meeting, I think there was kind of widespread concern about what, what was going on with the water supply. And so they, they, the, the <coughs> takeaway from the call was that the drinking water supply is, is meeting all the standards. They're not seeing data <coughs> that suggests that it's not safe. It's yeah. their secondary standards, though, right? Mm -hmm. that's, the big, that's the big key to me, their secondary standards. That's what everybody said. And that's what we've all been complaining about. Nobody would complain if we if everything was just right in the way it's supposed to be. But it's secondary standard. That's disturbing. From, yeah, I mean, just from a little bit of what, well not a little bit of what research I've done the last week, but a lot of what the research I've done the last week is we are hoping to be able to give you more at the next committee. We just cannot at this point release it. I know we're asking you to trust us, but um, we've all been working very diligently to try to get not only our local and our South Sangamon Water Commission, but the whole, our representatives involved and everybody. And then also on our end, doing a couple things to try to be more proactive as hiring CMT is one. And the secondly is doing a couple other steps to say, do we have the right people where we need them in every place? So we, I'm asking for well, patience, which, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. I understand. I'm in the same for four well, years. And that's what I was about to say. You know, well, I mean, as a village official, I mean, to me, I apologize to every one of the citizens that it took yeah. this administration three years to finally even start to admit that there was a problem with this. 
Not you know, and um, you know, it's long <laughs> overdue, and it's a shame that we're four years down the road having these discussions. Yeah. It's been still not taken care of. Okay, moving along. Public comment. Would anybody, anybody care to address the village board this evening? Oh, yes. Can add on that, Mayor Bonnie Billick. Um, a couple of things is has already been mentioned is a secondary EPA secondary standard that's not good Jeff I appreciate everything that you're doing to try to help solve this I really do it's unusual to have an attorney sitting there in old friend's house that is actually going above and beyond here so thank you for that thank you but what bothers me is when you said that the IEPA believes it was not we reassure you there's not an issue so you know a choice of words i don't know whether it was theirs or if you're putting it lightly to us nina i appreciate the fact that you're asking us for our patience <coughs> and ken i appreciate the fact that you realize that we have been patient for a hell of a long time okay mayor the one thing i'll give you kudos for is i've never heard you speak at a meeting as much as you have tonight okay well thank you <laughs> and then yeah. mr mao you started a ruckus last night and without telling Mr. You, Chairman, please direct the audience to direct their comments towards you and not myself. <laughs> well, there it's public comment for yeah, the thank board. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Go ahead. Mike. You started the ruckus with a couple of simple questions, and the only thing I'm going to ask you before I ask you the one question I have for you, Mr. Mao, is do not tell me that you were on the board when the Water Commission came in. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear all that. What I want to hear is you were asked a very simple question. You started a conversation and then all of a sudden went bloop i'm done with y'all you started it you continued the conversation one thing i want out of you is to simply ask how much more money is there a limit on what you think is reasonable to spend on this water plant see is how you're riding the fence just a simple that was a question asked over and over again and you refused to answer but you're adamant that our water is better okay and you want to move forward with the repairs so if you'll look my way and tell me is there a limit in your mind that you're thinking period well this is public comment yes it is and so and, and you you can comment i'm not going to answer questions it, yeah i mean <laughs> we're not here to have a discussion but we're, we're certainly here to hear your opinions so would anybody else care to address the village board this evening i have some I've been going, Becky Ethel, I've been going over these bonds and stuff, and I don't think you realize that in five years, between principal and interest, the cost will be close to two and a half million dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. South Sangamon County Water is not making a profit. Where in God's name do you think that money's going to come from? Is it going to be? And what do you think in five years we're going to be paying twelve and fifteen dollars for a thousand gallon for per thousand gallons at two and a half million dollars principal and interest? I think I'm pretty close. I think I'm pretty close. And God forbid they don't raise it enough that they have to snatch our real estate taxes. What's that going to do to us? <clears throat> and I don't know if you're aware, but there is no upper limit for borrowing set in the master bond ordinance. So they can go out and borrow God only knows how much money and we're stuck with. I don't know who did these. I don't know what attorneys you had. Well, we do know what attorney you had. And I'm going to tell you something. He stuck it to you big time, folks. Stuck it to you big time. They have no, there's no limit on how much they can borrow. How much are you going to let South Sangamon County Water borrow and put on our backs? Well, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you for your comment, sir. I'm, I'm not done yet. <laughs> My next question is: I want to know. I just asked Darlene what Terry Burke said when the insinuation was that 
they didn't know where these pictures came from. I want to know where our representative was on that damn board that didn't speak up and say, I've seen some of the pictures, I've talked to the people in Chatham, I know what's going on. Yes, this is true. If he didn't stand up for us, he needs to go. We need somebody out there who's going to stand up for us, at, not you guys, not you guys, us, the citizens. Okay. Um, I'm not done yet. She's my two and a half minutes. minutes left. No, no. You're going to listen to what I have to say. Matt, this is directed towards you. But I'm going to ask you to direct it to the chair. No, because it concerns you. I am a fixer just like you are. I have spent all my life trying to fix things to make them right. I tried to fix my mom's Parkinson's. I tried to fix my dad's congestive heart failure. And I tried to fix my husband's lung cancer. And I couldn't fix any of it. There has come a point with this community that this isn't going to get fixed without costing our kids' health. We're going to drive people out of this community because they can't pay the utilities. They can't pay their real estate taxes. I didn't move into this community to be pushed out by something as stupid as this. And I know the excuse was, well, we can do it cheaper. We can provide better quality water. Well, tell me, how big was that one? If you all believe that, I got some land I want to sell you in Florida. Okay, we have a gentleman back there that's been waiting to comment. Sir? I'm, I'm sorry, my name is Steve Kerber. I'm with this tobacco. And I don't mean to misdirect this, these comments because this. Uh, pardon me, sir, what was your last name? Steve Kerber, K E R B E R. With discount tobacco, a couple blocks, 100 North Main. And I'm sorry, I, I don't have a, a water issue particularly, and I don't mean to misdirect all this, but um, and I, I'd be happy to wait if I could continue. Oh, yeah, you're not um, but, uh, what we're asking the village for and the trustees is a, a liquor license for our establishment at 100 North Main Street. Um, we, we have done the preliminary background and working with Mr. McCarthy. Uh, we've done the background checks with the fingerprinting and my understanding that's all been approved. Yes. And we're here just asking the board if they would. You know, well, okay, so Matt, um, this isn't really the forum for that, but. We had to get it out there at some time to kind of get a feel whether yeah. the board was interested in doing this. So I told him to come in the public comment okay. section of this meeting. Mm -hmm. I sent the email to all of you given his business plan and what he's proposing. <coughs> and he just would like to know whether he should I, come back to the next committee meeting. I would think the next committee yeah. meeting is where we want to put this on the agenda. But, but, I would say the next committee meeting is where yeah. we put this on That's the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. We'll, we'll, we'll and I, the that, will, and that was the 9th of March. March 8th. March 8th. March 8th. Okay. Thanks, and I apologize. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, anybody else care to comment this evening? Yes, ma'am. Yes. My name is Carrie Jeffries, and I live in the South Wind subdivision. We moved here five years ago for my husband's job. He's the director of human resources at the Illinois Education Association, and I previously, before moving here, was a public employee advocacy. Um, which leads into what I want to comment about tonight. I'm here tonight to inquire if the Village of Chatham has a communications department, a person or a group who's responsible for releasing succinct, accurate messages on behalf of the village to the community. Having, a public, excuse me, having public employees or elected persons release official test results to a portion of the community is unacceptable. Having people on the payroll in any capacity who are speaking on behalf of the village who are not authorized to do so creates a very dis a dangerous situation for all of us. I do not appreciate being left in the dark when it comes to the health of my family or the value of my home. I've had to represent public employees who have acted in a similar fashion on Facebook or email. When employees speak out about village business without authorization, it opens the village up to a host of issues 
including litigation, which in turn would fall on the back of the taxpayers. I would encourage the BOC communications or HR department to review policies and procedures regarding the release of village information on private email, Facebook accounts, or private groups. This certainly would help with any issues that arrive down the road, will help the village look like cohesive as a unit, and send a clear, not a divided message to the community. If there's not a policy, I would encourage the VOC to adopt one as soon as possible, and I would also be willing to help assist in creating one. I am a very proud citizen of Chatham, and the last thing that I want to see is someone misrepresenting the village, especially when they have the audacity to go on record to a couple thousand people telling an expert in their field that they don't know what the hell they are talking about. Mm -hmm. Email and Facebook records, it doesn't matter if you erase them, if you delete them, they last forever. I've done trainings in this. They, well, you, can, you can't destroy them. Please help make the village look like a co cohesive team to the rest of the world. Great. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> Would anybody else care to address the village board this evening? Okay, moving along. Can I have a motion to put the Mr. Mayor, uh, can I just say... Oh. Uh, Is there something we can do regarding that? I mean, oh. I, I don't I, know what it's regarding. I'm not, I'm not sure what it's regarding either. I was, I was just going to say, um, and again, I'm the biggest advocate of not responding to public comments. It's public comment. But I just wanted to say for the record that... Uh, you know, I'm very careful. I want I want to let the IEPA speak for itself, so that's why I try to speak generically about some things. Right. So, you know, they'll be coming forward with more information. As soon as we get that, we'll release it. Obviously, we'll make that public. In our, discuss and, in our and discussions, they will. I, I don't think all, if it's all that as much, Jeff, too, is that we, we do have numerous employees of the Village of Chatham that go out onto social media networks. Um, elected officials etc and post things on there and I think some of this does cross the line of whether they're acting in a capacity as an employee of the village or in their official position speaking on behalf of the village or on you know in their capacity as a private citizen obviously you know we know in legal terms that when you hold a public position whether it's a public employee etc that you're held to a greater standard than that and you know I think it is a good reminder that you know, we as public officials, public employees have to be careful about what we portray out onto public media, social media, et cetera, type of sites. Yeah, we can take a look at that. I, we, I was just... Uh, we, I had, I went through our risk management, the new company, and they have a policy for social media. And I, I got a copy of that and we're in review on that right now. Showed it to Tim, he's reviewing it. And uh, we're reviewing it at a couple of places here at staff. So if the board wants to take a look at it, we can do that. But uh, I thought the same thing that it not only controls what the village puts out as its message, but also gives the employees as guidelines of what they can and cannot do when they put their own postings and stuff out there. And that would include the trustees as elected officials and employees of the village at the time. So. I'll be bringing that to you at the next committee meeting for you guys to review. Jeff, but it was prepared by our risk management, so they know. Tim looked at it; he, he thought it was fine. So, Jeff, if you can, can you go over kind of the agenda and Open Meetings Act, um, and kind of what we do as a village as far as documentation per our agenda? Because I know that was that came into question and. Um, I think there's a misinterpretation of the Open Meetings Act. Well, I, if this is referring to the question you asked earlier about um, posting and, and posting of documents, mm -hmm. um, the Open Meetings Act requires that the agenda be posted 48 hours in advance. Um, the, there's not a requirement that the actual documents be made publicly available in advance of a meeting. The village obviously tries to do that. You utilize board docs and, and you get documents up there as you can. But there's not a requirement in the Open Meetings Act that the that the you know if you're considering a contract or something like that 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 actually be posted 48 hours in advance. Thank you. Just said it be listed on the agenda. Well, what does Section C say where it says you're taking action on a particular? If if you're going to take action on a matter, it's got to be posted on listed on the agenda. Well, what did you just say? 
that you, the action item has to be listed on the agenda, but that doesn't mean you also have to have the the contract. Let's let's say you're considering a contract for well, approval, that has to be on the agenda, but the contract doesn't have to be out there in advance. And and you know there are communities that provide nothing in advance except the agenda. There are communities that you know provide everything in advance and, and everything in between. So. Well, specifically, he was asking about the warrants. That's not a contract. No, well, those don't have to be posted. Yeah, the, the warrants are just list, they're listed on the agenda as, as, as a warrant warrants. warrants. But it's listed. Mm -hmm. The um, word warrants is an warrant. action that will be taken. Approval of the warrants, and, right. And why does that not have to be out there? Because all you have to do is list what action you're going to take at the meeting. So it's on the agenda that they're going to approve the warrants. Well, the reason the warrants were out there this week is that Sherry was on vacation. She didn't come back until well, yesterday. Somebody did her job while she was gone. And, and there are communities that do not post, you well, know, it's they have to FOIA the warrants after the meeting. It's our community, not someone else's. It pertains to what goes on here and what goes on here, and that's all. Okay. And um, it's just another interpretation, again, of what is being said. You know, you're, you're taking action on the warrants, and you have no time to look at that to see where there are any mistakes, um, if there are, which there that's, are, you know, of course, no yeah, that's the I, I just see it's misinterpretation. Okay, uh, before mo moving on to the consent agenda, I did want to announce that Nick Franke has been chosen to be the lead worker in the parks. So. Congratulations to him. Who was that, Tom? Nick, Nick Franke. Franke. Nick Franke? Okay. Uh, wait, a minute, wait a minute. So that was under Mayor Comments and Report? Yeah. Okay. So he's um, going to be the lead worker in parks? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, consent agenda. Can we have a motion to put the consent agenda on the table? I'll make a motion. One quick thing here about yes. social media. I understand people get called all up in this stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. If it wasn't for social media, we would never know, other than the taste of the water, what was going on over at South Sangamon. Um, the district over there or through these meetings here if we didn't have social media and people that were willing to speak out and pass information along we would be totally in the dark still so you might remember that we need to know and if we can get the answers from somebody else we're going to find out and believe me there are no secrets in this world Everything comes out sooner or later. Okay, um, consent agenda, motion to put the consent I'll agenda. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion. Uh, questions about the warrants? Questions to the minutes? Pat, would you please take the vote? Christy Kimsey? Yes. Oil? Yes. Lindhorst? Yes. Mal? Yes. Okay, yes. okay um, old business. Kim, backup water supply with Springfield. Uh, discuss this at length. Um, this is the backup water supply for uh, with CWLP. Um, if we need to utilize it, I'll make a motion to, or make a motion to put that on the table. I'll second. Um, we've discussed it. So, um, how would you take the vote, please? Mm -hmm. It'd be Oregon sixteen oh six. Christy Kimsey? Yes. Loyal? Yes. Lindhorst? Yes. No? Yes. Ms. Garland? Yes. Pat, were you just going to comment on the customer service manual? We've received no comments from, since our last meeting, and uh, we would like to have it out there. We would like to have a candid discussion with the board at the next committee meeting, because there's a couple items on there that we really need to point out to you. And that's what I was kind of asking is, what? What are the problems you guys are seeing or questions that you have when people are calling? If you can point those out to us, that would be and, huge. And there's, there's some items that are currently on the books that we have not been enforcing that we've left in there to enforce. And 
it may uh, spur some discussion. And that's what we're kind of, yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, new business. Uh, Kim, the Ameren agree agreement. <laughs> Are we skipping goldenrod? Yeah, we, we, we redid the uh, agenda here. We're going to okay. do goldenrod up. Oh, first. Okay. Yeah. We've got uh, a couple gentlemen here from the state that are going to do a little uh, talk and presentation. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jay Edwards, and um, I, I'm here to represent the Department of Transportation. Um, to fill you in a little bit on the on the Goldenrod um, High Speed Rail Crossing project, and then uh, my coworker Jason Johnson was going to uh, present a, an agreement to you that's related to that for the cost sharing of the project. Is that one all right? That's perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, the High Speed Rail project, as you're probably familiar with, um, is a extends from Chicago down to St. Louis and uh, they're upgrading each of the crossings uh, for the entire stretch. Here in Chatham, the uh, Spruce Street crossing um, was the, is, is what this is about. The problem with the Spruce, Spruce Street crossing, it was it's too close to Elmer Route 4 and it was considered a, a safety issue. And, uh, and so as a part of this project, you, you probably may be familiar with some of this already. The um, project includes a new roadway along Goldenrod from uh, Main Street to, to Illinois Route 4. It's all on the far right side of there. Um, this is Main Street. Um, Goldenrod runs east and west. And then the, the curved portion here is Illinois Route 4. The um, elementary school here is on the corner of um, Route 4 and the county road. So this project would include a new um, new roadway from Main Street to connect to the to the state route, and then we would and then um, we would close the Spruce Street crossing. That would that kind of a swap there, be a safer safer um, location for the crossing. I think that was even a, I, I believe that was um, request of uh, Chatham. I believe. Back and I, I wasn't involved with it at that point, but uh, some of the history behind that that provides a better better route through here to get to the uh, to Route Four there. Um, part of the project, if you scroll up a little bit there, if you don't mind, part of the project is extending the bicycle path. I'll try not to talk too long here, so I have a long meeting. So give you a little background and reason and talk about. It. That's fine if you can. Um, there you go. Now you can see the Spruce Street crossing. The bike bike path currently comes down to Spruce Street, and then as a part of this project, that crossing would close, and then the bike path would be extended down to Goldenrod, and then and then over Main Street. Uh, we've had quite a bit of coordination already on this over the last couple of years with the uh, for the engineering issues. We met with the school. And we met with uh, Chatham for as far as utility issues. Right now, we're at the very ending stages of this project. Um, it's about a $5 million project. Um, I guess I can hand it over to Jason. Or do you want me to go ahead? No. OK. What was your name, sir? Jay Edwards. OK, thank you. I have a business card I can get to you later. That'd be great. Now, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have now or later, either way. Thanks, Jay. Jay is my coworker in our IDOT District 6 office in Springfield, and he's a studies and plans engineer, and I'm what you call a project support engineer. And so I kind of wait until uh, the plans and studies engineers and the utilities people and all the real people that do the concrete work get their work about done, and then I come in and help coordinate things and draft and agreements, things like that. Uh, but to follow up on what Jay said, what uh, we've prepared, my office has prepared, it's a joint agreement that should be entered into between the state and the village. And it just covers basically uh, provisions for, for the work here. In addition to 
we've got the plans and special provisions that IDOT has prepared and is getting ready to put in a letting for the contract and go through the bidding process and all the requirements that IDOT requires for construction with their contractor. What we've got here tonight is a joint agreement, uh, a proposed joint agreement between IDOT and the village to cover items such as a transfer of, uh, new, of the new Goldenrod Drive after it's constructed by the state. The state will transfer it over to the village. Also includes um, a maintenance and jurisdictional transfer of the bike trail from, uh, we're going to construct the bike trail from uh, Spruce Street, the existing crossing. That will be closed. The pavement will be tore out after the new crossing at Golden Rod's open. And uh, the bike trail will be constructed from where Spruce Crossing is now down south for approximately um, 1,008 feet down to the sidewalk at the new crossing at Golden Rod. So, um, which, the agreement covers uh, the terms for that. Also included in here is a lot of the boilerplate that we do in virtually any agreement, transfer agreement. It, it, and um, I, it included our TIF contribution. Right, that's the other thing. It, right. it included our uh, our participation in putting the tube under Route 4 and under the railroad tracks, the cost of it. Mm -hmm. You'll see uh, on page two, there's a cost division table. <clears throat> That state that lists the amount uh, that the state's contributing, and the amount that the village is contributing. The state columns include state money and the federal money that IDOT administers. Uh, it's the federal money from the Federal Highway Administration. I mean, Federal Railroad Administration that's uh, handling. Uh, we're receiving funding for the high-speed rail corridor from Chicago all the way down to East St. Louis. You'll, you'll see in the cost division table, and it's, it covers construction costs. The village is contributing $150,000 for uh, a couple of water main borings. And uh, in addition to that, they're contributing $500,000 in TIF incentive monies. And that's about it, other than a 15, in addition, there's a 15% uh, charge for the water main work for preliminary construction engineering, which would be 15% of the 150,000, which would be an additional uh, 22,500. So it all adds up to uh, 150,000 plus the 500,000 in TIF money uh, plus the 22,500, which is a total of 672,500 for village contribution. The total amount of uh, State and federal contribution, and this is for under construction, is approximately 4.2 million, and that's listed in the cost division table. In addition to that, uh, <clears throat> we're using federal funds to acquire the real estate needed uh, for the right of way for Goldenrod. You'll see from the railroad tracks east to South Main, uh, right of way real estate's needed in order to make the improvement so we're having to buy out uh, some of the many maxi storage properties there and then from on the west side from the tracks over to route four we're having to uh, acquire some property and so <clears throat> this agreement covers those costs and it also covers references to existing village ordinances which covers uh, parking requirements uh, sewer requirements and requirements that prohibits encroachments on the roadways. And uh, another important, some other important provisions are, include the, covers the construction of the new signalized intersection at Route 4 at the new uh, Golden Rock. You'll see down there in the big uh, square section in the lower left-hand corner in yellow, that's going to, the new Golden Rod is going to approach Route 4 from the east, and then there'll be improvements west of there on the uh, west approach that's on Polecat Road. <coughs> the uh, Route 4 is under state jurisdiction. The, the, the east-west route from Golden Rod and um, Polecat Road will be under village jurisdiction. So we've got um, 
some provisions that covers costs on maintenance and electrical energy for the signalized intersections. So it is going to be signalized? Yes. Jeff, can we act on this this evening? Yeah, what we have done is prepared an ordinance that would basically suggest it be approved subject to legal review. Um, we just got these documents on um, Friday, and so um, we need time, a little bit of time to review them, but my understanding is the state would like them back um, relatively soon because they want to start the process. And that's last but not least, we're on a very tight schedule. We want to <clears throat> actually, this is under two construction agreements. So the section from the tracks west over to near the elementary school is uh, under one contract that's scheduled to go on a March 4 letting. That's next Friday. And the reason that's uh, time is of the essence on that section is that if it makes the four, uh, March 4 letting, it will allow the construction at the signalized intersection and Polecat Road to be completed before uh, elementary school goes back into session in the middle of August. That's something the school district was very, it was important to them yep. to get it done during the summer. And it's in the special provisions of the, uh, uh, that goes along with the, the plan drawings that will go out for Letty on March 4. And then the other part from the tracks to east to south main, uh, looks like that's probably going to make the, the next letting, which is uh, scheduled for April 22. Have you secured the land in where the storage units are at this time? They're in negotiations. Now for the March, for the March 4 letting from the tracks west, there's, there's four parcels that are an issue, and I've got an email from my boss who says, uh, two of the parcels have been signed. There's uh, verbal agreements on the remaining two, and we'll probably have those received next week. And once those are in, once we get those next week, and if we get the village signature and the joint agreement next week, that's all we need uh, by March 3, and we'll get on the letting for the morning of March 4. On the, uh, from the tracks, East, that's on the April 22 letting, we've got four parcels and they are all in negotiations, but they're get, uh, from what I've heard from our land acts people, they're getting closer and closer and they're confident that that will make the April 22 letting. Okay. Um, then two other questions. Uh, okay. If when you're saying you're acquiring the land um, east of the tracks, would you be acquiring that entire area with all the units, or are you go going to be acquiring just the area where you need it? In terms of the, you know, you can see that there's other storage units there right. that would not be impacted by well, we're, this part of it. What we're acquiring is everything that's needed to do the improvements, and I think that's the light blue line. Yeah. The right of way lines. Okay. Now, um, from our our conversations with our Land Act office, they had negotiations with that owner, and that owner stated that um, those mini maxi storage buildings are modular in construction, and he will be able to uh, basically uh, demolish the bottom one third and enough to clear it and create less disturbance and uh, get that taken care of. So then, um, Pat, I would assume that if that is the case, they do they they get their their acquisition. The storage units remain there um, since the entrance to those storage units is basically at the end of Goldenrod. We would uh, allow them access on Main Street, uh, an additional access on Main Street. Then yes, yes. Currently, a, a gap in the fence there that you can open that gate up and allow people in that. I think there's an entrance here, isn't there? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. We're saying on that other side. Okay. Very good. And then, um, in terms of going from, I know you said the bike path is going to come in and go over the tracks and hook up basically with the other sidewalk and bike path that's in that's in the park. Are there going to be sidewalks 
on the extension of Goldenrod and are there sidewalks then on Route 4 going down to the Circle Drive? Could you go to the other um, file there? Which one was it? Um, I think it was, I think I put the word small after it, Goldenrod, small because it was, it was zoomed in. Better. That might help. Is that, is that a third one? If not, that's fine. I just thought it might give a better review. That was just a black and white one I threw in there. It's, uh, but I thought I thought I'd send you a third one. But I thought I'd put it on there, that's, but it doesn't that's, appear. That's all right. There are, are sidewalks along Goldenrod. Um, the whole, from, from the bike path to the east, it's a wider sidewalk for a bike path. Mm -hmm. From the, from the uh, picture's probably better. I'm so used to talking about it, it's probably hard to pick on that too. There we go. Maybe this helps. Um, the bike path comes from the north along the railroad tracks. <coughs> Going to the east, um, there's a 10 foot wide proposed bicycle path, doubles as a, as a sidewalk. Going to the west, it's just a normal <coughs> sidewalk over to the intersection here so that people could walk across to the school. Was that, was that answering your question? Okay, and then what about from the intersection to Circle Drive? The Main Street intersection? Yeah. Or the no, Route 4? the Route 4, 4 intersection. Route 4 to Circle oh, Drive. Oh, this side? Here? Yes. Um, there isn't any proposed um, sidewalk included with the plans. Okay. <coughs> from uh, the intersection west across Route 4 and over to the school, there's going to be as part of the signalized intersection, there'll be pedestrian signals with uh, the countdown, the countdown pedestrian signals. We anticipate a good amount of school students will be coming out of elementary school and heading straight east. Well, and then that, that's kind of the, the point is if there's students in Circle, in circle Drive, and they go to the intersection to cross, there is no, they would have to go all, I mean, I guess they'd go down the bike path and then cut across somebody's lot to get to a house in Circle Drive. You see where I'm saying, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, I do. I, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I, I wasn't involved with the project from the very beginning, um, so I, I, I'm honestly not sure why there isn't one there necessarily off the top of my head. Um, we don't, we try to provide bicycle, uh, sidewalks um, where we have connections, you know, from, from a pedestrian area, like a housing complex to schools. Uh, I'd have to go back and look and see what, maybe what the thought process was. Could you do that, that please? Sure. Thank you. We are providing, the sidewalk will be, uh, you'll see from the west side of Illinois Route 4, and then parallel, and on the north side of um, Polecat Road, yeah, there's yeah. a sidewalk that goes from out four over. You'll see that that roadway that's yeah. shaped like a snake. That's the drop off for uh, a parents. Usually, parents drive in there and drop their kids. Yes. So at that point, there's a sidewalk where it get, that reaches the school property, and then a little further to the west, I think that's uh, the white concrete there where the buses uh, come in. Uh, you'll see the sidewalk goes to that to that uh, driveway. <coughs> so from those points, they could reach the sidewalk that's on the just south of the building. Oh, yeah, yeah, and sure, and I, I get that. I, I was just curious to go from the intersection to Circle Drive. Typically, I think when IDOT um, installs, look, when IDOT looks at, at sidewalks in a situation like that, they would want local participation. Not that the Chatham wouldn't want to participate in that, but so part of the um, my, my, my guess is the, the focus on this was to get the Goldenrod um, connection in place and Polcat, and then really the work along Route 4 was just to get the intersection <coughs> to work correctly with the new turn lanes. <coughs> so um, I, but I can certainly go back and look and see if there was discussion about that or if there was some reason why we weren't doing that. Okay. Uh, I think, I'm not sure either, but I would think that <coughs> nearly, um, Probably 95% other than the, what the villages contribute with their TIF funds 
and for the water main that they requested. 95% uh, of the funding is coming from the Federal Railroad Administration. A lot of times when we see roadway improvements of this length, it's from the Federal Highway Administration. This money is coming from the Federal Railroad Administration, and it's if there was not going to be uh, high-speed rail improvements, this we wouldn't even be here today. Oh, None sure. of this would be happening. Yeah. So my guess would is probably be, even if we asked for it, the Federal Railroad Administration probably would would state this is an improvement not related to the high to the high-speed rail corridor. We've had uh, limitations up and down the line. We're working on a, uh, similar projects in our District 6 down from Brighton north all the way up to north of Lincoln and uh, in Logan County. And there's scopes of work that they're limiting, limiting, limiting us to based on the amount of funding they got from the Federal Railroad Administration is dictating to us what we can and can't do. So that, Any further discussion? Can I have a motion? What was, what was your name again for the record? Yeah, Jason Johnson. Thank you. I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, how Wait a minute. Let me, let me get caught up here. Who was the second? <laughs> and this is based upon legal review. Legal review. Yes. And it's written that way in the ordinance. Trisha Kimsey. Yes. Boa? Yes. Lynn Horse? Yes. Mel? Yes. Scudamore? Yes. Okay, Ken, the AMR agreement. This is Ordinance 1607. No, this be 08. 1608. This is the for the wireless distribution facilities license agreement that the people from Ameren spoke about last time. Okay, we have a second? Second. second. Discussion? Hearing none, Pat, would you take the vote, please? That was Matt. Second. Trisha Kimsey? Yes. Ball? Yes. Lynn Horse? Yes. Mal? Yes. Scarman? Yes. Okay. And Brockenbridge Manors, Manor Platts 1, 2, and 3. This is uh, Resolution 16 dash. The uh, 816. 816. Okay. Um, this is a uh, reduction in security for the. Uh, Breckenridge Manor Plats 1, 2, and 3 would be reducing the line of credit from 34400 to 30428 I'll make a motion. We have a second. Second. Discussion? Uh, Pat, would you take the vote, please? Well, hold on a second. Can we, can we get a list on the work that's yet to be done on this? On these three? Last, last, last week. Last week you presented it. Okay. Okay. Pat. Take the vote, please. Trisha Kimsey? Yes. Moral? Yes. Lynn Horse? Yes. Mal? Yes. Ken, yes. Uh, yes. the annexation of the Beck property. Ordinance 16 09. This is uh, annexation of the Beck property. Okay. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Yeah, the motion. We have a second. second. Uh, we discussed it. Pat, would you take the vote? People want to know where the Beck property is. It's right where that road's going right through. Christian Kimsey? Yes. Paul? Yes. Lindhorst? Yes. Mal? Yes. And Scarman? Yes. Okay. Uh, annotation of the Spangler property. 16-10, uh, the Spangler property annexation. This is the property off Mansion Road it is. that we discussed uh, for the bed and breakfast, possible bed and breakfast. Ms. Spangler here, if you have any questions for her. Make a second. 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 Who was the second, please? I was, I was asked last week to check with her changing the B2 to B2 bed and breakfast only, and she declined to do that. She would prefer his own. <coughs> so, is this what does this give her the right to do? I'm sorry, she wants to build a put a bed and breakfast there and maybe have a little shop to sell some items and stuff out of <coughs> It's not giving like I, any drink. right that's in a B2, any right that's in a B2 or B1, right? Pretty much, yes. I don't know. Okay, any discussion? Further? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Pat, would you take the vote, please? Krista Kimsey? Yes. Well? Yes. Lynn Horse? Yes. Mal? Yes. Yes. 
tea. Um, the MF tea program 2015. Uh, this is resolution 09-16. Um, this is the resolution approving the motor fuel tax program, or um, I guess it looks like the abbreviated one. Uh, for oh, 20 that's the actual this is being out of all of 2015. Okay. 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 I'll make a motion to put it on the table. Second. 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 Okay. Discussion. Uh, Pat, would you take the vote, please? Trisha Kimsey. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Lindhorst. Yes. Mal. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Ken Breckenridge, Breckenridge Manor platform. Five. That's going to be on hold. It's on hold. Okay. Okay. Um, Pat, your report. I've got a little handout here for you guys to take a look at. The front sheet is one chart of, of proper merchant utilities, the second sheet is for uh, <coughs> rate. I put a comparison on there to our previous engineers. I also made a proposal that currently we, we charge developers 1.25% of their development cost, and we use that money then to pay for our engineers and for review and inspections out in the field. I can't remember when the last time, if ever, that was ever updated, and it's become kind of obsolete. So I'm proposing that when we hire CMT, we also bump that uh, fee up to 2.5% of construction cost. We could discuss it more or well I would hope that we could put together and maybe have an ordinance at the committee meeting to pass so that we could get our engineers on board we've got a lot of items for them to look at and uh, I'm good with getting an ordinance together you talked about this earlier Pat? Do I have an ordinance to discuss for next meeting? No. I was hoping that we'd have an okay. ordinance for you guys to turn around and accept them as our engineers at the next meeting. We'd probably extend the special meeting that we have set to cover by 30, in. and um, then we could act on these issues at that time. Okay. And do we need to, when we're doing a special meeting, do we need to include a member to the planning commission? Well, we need a member on the planning commission. We need a member on the zoning board of appeals. And it passed around one for the parks too, so for the to get appointments for the parks. So you <coughs> excuse me, you'll have recommendations for us, sir. So if you don't have all these things on your special meeting on the eighth, make sure you discuss it with Elaine so she knows what's going on. Okay. Um, the committee of the whole will meet March eighth at six p.m. And the next re regular uh, village board meeting is March 22nd at 6 p.m. Uh, can I have a motion to go into executive session to I'll discuss personnel? I'll make that motion. Do you have a second? Second. Now, would you take the vote, please? Mr. Kimsey? Yes. Well, yes. Lindhorst? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No action will be taken after closed session. Yeah.